October 26, and this is The View with Catherine Chang. Today's topic is Bablinski email, Biden, Trump, and Taiwan's perceptions. First of all, I must say it is kind of disappointed that Bablinski did not release more information last Sunday. On the contrary, the wealthy Chinese businessman Guo Wengui and the former White House chief strategist Bannon both have new revelations yesterday, including the photo of Hunter Biden and his niece. However, these photos are not 100% confirmed yet. Here are some points. A. The U.S. presidential election held the final debate on October 22nd, which was last Friday, and just three hours before the debate, Bablinski held a press conference and pointed out that he was the CEO of Sinohawk Holdings, which was established by the Biden family and the CEFC China Energy. And Bablinski said, the so-called big guy gets 10% dry share is Biden himself. There was a saying that Bablinski would hold a press conference on Sunday morning Taipei time to announce more evidence, but he didn't hold the press conference. Why? I think there might be two possibilities. First, Bablinski didn't plan to release the information at all. It was just the speculations by the media. And second, could it be some mysterious force preventing him from releasing the evidence? That's another question. B. Is it really Hunter Biden's niece in the photos? Would a chief White House correspondent for One American News Network, Chanel Ryan, said that this 14-year-old girl is Bo Biden's daughter, and that means that she is a niece of Hunter Biden. But I think these need further confirmation. See, Bannon said that in a new email, Biden's brother, James, told Hunter that Biden was discussing important business deal with Mr. O, and Bannon said, could Mr. O be Obama? Again, I think this is also a speculation. D. As to Taiwan's perceptions of United States presidential elections, the ruling party and also the opposition party KMT seem to have different attitude because Taiwan and the United States currently have tight relations. Some people would think that the Taiwan authorities support Trump because, you know, however, we know the Taiwanese government denied it and said that it will not escort any party. As to the KMT, many KMT members express support for Biden and even say that Biden will win the election. I don't quite understand why the KMT support Biden, because the Republican Party has always been more anti-Chinese communist than the Democratic Party, which is why most Taiwanese support Republican candidate Donald Trump. E. From my perspective, I think if Trump is elected, the United States will certainly maintain a strict policy toward China and will be more open to Taiwan in regards to economic cooperation and arms sales. On the contrary, the Democratic Party has always maintained the so-called one-China policy, and they want to maintain peace relations with China. However, even if Biden got elected, I don't think the relations between the U.S. and China will go back to where it was. If you ask me about Trump and Biden, I would say that Trump is a businessman and Biden is a long-term politician. However, in some ways, I think Biden seems more like a businessman. Here are the top stories. Today we have zero confirmed cases. First, let's look at the latest development of the smoking gun email and videotape. On October 22nd, Fox News re-explodes Biden's China investment. It published an article with the title, Harris Prominent Democrats List as Key Contacts for Biden Family Business Venture Projects. It also includes New York governors and mayor. And it said that... Joe Biden's brother, Gene Biden, sent an email on May 15, 2017, with the subject line, we told you that phrase one, domestic contacts and projects, and it shared a list of key domestic contacts. And the list include Kamala Harris, Senator Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Governor of New York Andrew Cuomo, and Mayor of New York City Bill de Blasco, etc. 
Also, Hunter Biden's smoking gun email photo of a 14-year-old girl identity revealed, according to the chief White House correspondent for One American New York Network, and we call her the Chanel Ryan. And she said that here were several figures that we have seen on this hard drive who have questionable ages, um, but none of them could be verified who they are except this one, and that is Natalie Biden, and she is the niece. Of the Hunter Biden, I should pronounce the. That means that the Hunter Biden, just exactly the Hunter Biden. And she also said, "We submit a request to the Newcastle County Police Department in Delaware." And she said, "I cannot tell too much detail about the pictures, but they are enough that we know for sure she was 14 years old." And we can see that this is the niece of Hunter. But as I said in the beginning, these photos need to be verified. Additionally, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson said Joe Biden has been caught in repeated lies. Ron had an interview with the Fox News and said that the voice. Vice President is lying again. You know, check out page 78 of our report, where we show a Chinese company, CFC, transfer about five million U.S. dollars to business controlled by Hunter Biden. He also said, well, he's lying about the fact that you know said that he never spoke to his son Hunter about his overseas business connections. And as to the latest news of Biden today, is that. According to the New York Post, Biden called Trump supporters "chumps" at Pennsylvania driving rally, and Biden said that, "Well, he said I will work as hard for those who don't support me as those who do, including those chumps with the microphone out there." Well, why did Biden say that? I think it's not a good idea. It's not a smart idea because it will irritate Trump supporters. As to the latest poll that were updated, and we can see according to the poll website 538, the latest poll we can see that the show that Biden got 52 percent of the supporting rates and Trump got 42.9 percent. We're talking about China issue. The pro-U.S. faction takes a lead at the fifth planner section of the 19th CPC Central Committee, Wu Zhong Quan Hui, and we can see that the fifth planning sessions held the press conference in Beijing today. And the pro-U.S. faction include former Premier of PRC Zhu Rongji and Vice President of PRC Wang Qishan, both appear at the meeting. Well, was、well, something interesting to point out is that former CCP member Zheng Zhiqiang, you know, Zheng Zhiqiang was sentenced 18 years in jail on September 22nd because he criticized Xi Jinping as, you know, not an emperor standing there exhibiting his new clothes, but a crown, a strip of naked, and who insists on continuing being emperor. And we can see that Zheng Zhiqiang is considered as standing with Wang Qishan's faction. So I'm kind of surprised to see. Wang Qishan in the meeting today. On the other hand, Chinese fighter into Taiwan's ADIZ again this morning, according to the Taiwan Ministry of National Defense. A Chinese Y-8 anti-submarine aircraft entered Taiwan's southwest airspace at around 8:40 a.m. today, and also on Sunday's afternoon. On the contrary, the U.S. voiced its support for Taiwan. U.S. think tank CSIS senior advisor for Asia and the director of the China Power Project, Bonnie Glasser, published a poll on the diplomat, and it said. Annual surveys conducted by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs consistently show that 41 percent of Americans back military action if China invades Taiwan, and this is the highest degree of support since 1982. In the end, I want to share with you that President Xi and Microsoft have a press conference today. President Xi said that Microsoft will invest in Taiwan for around 300 billion NT dollars, and it will. Also create more than thirty thousand jobs, and this is their biggest investment in Taiwan in thirty-one years. Well, that is something worth looking forward to, right? So this is the view for today. We'll stay in tune for the latest development of the U.S. presidential election. I'm going to see you again tomorrow. Bye.